Hey guys, Pyro one here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a song with a new SM64 music making tool called Sec64. It's I like I prefer it over XML converter because you can do a lot of stuff in the like tempo changes, uh, pitch bends, volume things, anything. Basically, any command in the MIDI file, it'll go, it'll implement it into your M64 file, which the XML converter doesn't do. It just I think in 2.0 I think it does a little bit of volume stuff, but other than that, it doesn't really do anything else. But yeah, Sec64 is really good at putting that stuff in, so it helps you have better and accurate M64 files so I can talk. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into that. So right here I have my MIDI file in Envil Studio. If you remember from my last tutorial, uh, you should know how the percussion is separated, uh, how to set all the, like, the symbol notes, crash symbol notes, all that stuff. So just remember from that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to implement a loop point into our MIDI file. This is this basically does the same function as the SM64 music fuser as in the last tutorial, but it does it inside of the MIDI file and in Sec64, so you don't have to mess with any extra tools. And plus, it helps for larger MIDI file or larger loop points that don't work with XML Converter Plus music fuser because. Uh, Sec64 makes your M64 files really small as compared to the XML Music Converter. But anyways, so what you want to do is, the first thing you want to do is go to the point where you want your song to loop at. Like this one has an intro right here, you can tell. Let's see. So yeah, we don't want that part to loop at the beginning each time you hear it. So what we'll do is, go to the point, so you can do this in View Composer. Go to the point where you want to loop at, and this case is right here at measure 3. Beginning measure 3. So. Let's wait for it to load. Take, it's gonna take a while because you score or Anvil so you want to be done. I mean, you don't you don't need new score or XML at all for this, which is even better. So, come, so mm, Anvil Studio is taking forever. Anyways, so you go to the point where the song is, where you want to loop. So right there is that's where I want it to be. We'll go to Edit, Insert MIDI Event right here. So you're gonna open this up. Make sure include meta events is checked, and we will scroll down until we see marker. Add that. Add something like section one to separate the sections. That's how it is in the original SMC4 as well. They have sections marked off like that for loop points. But anyway, so you do that. Add the section in there. All right, now you save your MIDI file, and we'll just go out of that for now. Oh, sorry, that's my Discord. Next up, we'll go to <coughs> Sec64. Actually, let me go and save this on the desktop so I can access it easier. Save this to the desktop. So I'll be using the NSMB Final Boss. So I'll go and minimize that. Now then, let's go ahead and find Sec64, which is on desktop. Record recent things. In my case, it's here. So you open up Sec64, and we'll use Win64, 64 bit. Alright, so the first thing you want to do in Sec64 is load up your ROM description, which you'll need to load us for every time, or else it's not going to load all the S64 music commands and stuff. So go and load that up. <coughs> now that you've got that, you want to open up your MIDI file. So import MIDI, yeah, this imports MIDI directly instead of having to translate it to XML and then to M64, which is way more efficient. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, and then in this MB final boss is the one we want. There we go. And now you'll see this is done right there. It loaded in the thing, so we're all good. And then you go to the Audio Seek tab next, and here's where you can see all of the commands in your song. So right here we have the header track, and then all of the rest of the regular channels as well as the notes and stuff. <coughs> the very first thing you want to do is, I always forget to do this, but the very first thing you want to do is go into your header track and if you don't see a master volume command right here on the right, you'll have to add one in, which is easy. Just click anywhere and do command to add on the bottom, master volume, and add it in. Now you want to change the value, which you do that click in the command and then go to the bottom right change it to any value you want, just however loud you want it to be. Like in my case I usually use 64 
0x64 just because it's a nice middle ground. Sounds pretty decent. So, put that in there. And now everything else is already loaded for you. Like, it already has a tempo for you. It always includes pitch bends or volume changes or anything like that. So you don't need to worry about any of those. Unless you want to like fine tune stuff, then you'll you'll just fine tune it as you please. <coughs> so now you've got that. So we'll look at all the commands we have here. Now for the loops we're we're gonna do, the custom loop point. As you see here, there's a group of absolute channel pointers right here, and then another group of absolute channel pointers right there. The first group of absolute channel pointers are those are the ones that's the whole song, like it's the intro plus the loop point. The second set right here is just anything past that loop point that you added in. So this right here will be the loop that doesn't have the intro inside of it. What we want to do is look at the command right here that says branch absolute always, which is an FB command. Right now this command jumps to another spot inside the code of the M64 file. So right here it says FB0007, which means it's jumping to uh, 0x07, which in this case is right here, this channel pointer, which is the start of the intro part. So it's easy. If you want to start the section, the second section right here, since we already have it set up through the MIDI file, we will look at these value right here. The location is 0x26. So you'll go to your branch out to always, change those values to the start of your channel pointers, which in this case is 0x26. So. 0, 0, 26. There you go. Now your loop point is set, so it will loop to the right position once your song is over. So that's all good. Now that we have that, we can switch over to the instruments now. Now you'll need to open up your Mario 64 instrument list, which I'll link down in the description. And we'll be using instrument set 17 for this one. <coughs> so let's scroll up. Pretty general instrument set drums and all that stuff <coughs> so got that what you'll do here is you'll insert all of your commands or not commands all of your instruments into the c1 command the c1 command of course calls instrument as it says right there on the right and in this case the first channel which in this case it starts at bit starts at zero counting up instead of one like in anvil studio so the same there, so zero here is the same as track one in Ample Studio, which is the bass. So we will set it as the bass, and the bass in this case is zero one. So we'll set the instrument command to zero one. <coughs> <coughs> in addition, the channel volume command is right here, the DF command. And you can change this to any value you want, and it'll, this will set the channel volume of the instrument you want. So, normally you wouldn't have to change it if the MIDI file already does it for you, but if it doesn't, like this one kind of does it, but it doesn't all the way, you'll have to change it to make sure it sounds, in case you don't have one instrument overpowering the rest of them. So, let's change it to something like, well, 7F is fine. Well, maybe not. Let's change it to like 50. Something like that. Alright. Now we have the next instrument, which is channel 1 here, which means it's channel 2 in Anvil Studio. And church organ. So we'll be using the percussive organ for this one, which is instrument 3. 0x03. And all these values are in hexadecimal, so you'll have to enter hex values for everything. 03. That's what we need. <coughs> now I have channel 2, which is channel 3 in here, which is the guitar. And we'll be using, let's see, we'll use synth voice for this, which is 07. 0x07. Zero zero Alright, channel 4, which has, which is this one, the percussion. Now, percussion is pretty special in this because the percussion isn't on an instrument in here, you don't see it on here. The general percussion is in any ways. So general percussion is always going to be the instrument 7F. I believe the only instrument set that general percussion doesn't appear in is instrument set 26, which is the fanfare instrument set. So you won't have general percussion in there. But every time, every other time, instrument is 7F. So let's set that in there. 
and channel volume. We'll see that at, at that for now. You have to mix it yourself and set up with the volume just to make sure it sounds decent enough. But for now, let's put that in there. And we have channel five, which is another organ. So we'll set that as zero three. <coughs> channel six, right here, which is our strings. So we'll also set that as another organ. Then we have channel seven. Channel seven. <coughs> So the crash symbol. Now I'll look back over here. Crash symbol is decimal value 11 or hexadecimal value 0x0b. Zero, zero so I'll put a 0b in here. <coughs> All right. And then channel 7 is, I believe that is the regular symbol. And that is correct. Just channel 8 of course and regular symbol is hex value 0x0a the hi-hat symbol and of course you don't know the difference you see in my last tutorial about why I went over those 0x0a which is 10 in decimal so now we've got all that make sure there's no other instrument changes or anything which in this case there is right here so we'll go and fix that channel 0 still which was Instrument zero one. Yes, this also does instrument changes, which is really cool too. Zero, zero two, which is organ zero three. Channel two, three guitar. 07 for the synth voice. Not zero 04, zero 07. No, zero 07. There you go. And this one doesn't have one. And this one has one. Channel 4, which is 5, which is the second organ. We'll put that as zero 03. Right there. Alright. And the next one, which was channel zero 06. Which is strings, so we'll put that as another organ. And then channel six, which is it have an instrument, and channel seven, which is another. Alright. So once you set all your instruments and you've tuned all your volume and stuff, you think you're done, we go and press save raw. And now you'll save this from here as an M64 file. So let's do that as a desktop. Um NS MB final that M64. Don't forget the extension. So save that there. Alright, so we will go into our run file in the level importer or SMB64 editor, whichever one you choose. Load it up. We will be choosing this ROM right here. And go down to the song you replace, of course, just like normal. Normal how you re import songs. We'll place it over this. Now let's see. We will use instrument set 17, which is the one we chose at the beginning. 17. So we'll set that like normal. 17. All right. Save changes, and now you can test how it sounds your run. Now, of course, if it doesn't sound like you want it to, you'll have to tune it a little bit, edit some volume stuff like that. You have to mix it pretty much. If it's a good MIDI file, it will usually already have all the stuff pre-mixed for you, but sometimes it doesn't, so you just have to do it yourself. <coughs> but, alright. Let's test how it sounds. I'm going to turn off my mic for this, see how it sounds. It's me, Mario!
And all right. It sounds sounds like it should. The loop point works, and there you go. Now, like I said, of course you'll have to tune it as you please, because that was that was mixed a little badly, just because the bass movie file. So you have to mix that, of course. But uh, yeah, that's basically how it goes. And let's let's test one more thing. Let's make sure that this doesn't kill the audio whenever you cut the star. Like for instance, say you make a song in XML converter and it's way too big. So once you import it in over maybe the let's see, let's simply import it over a level, and then once you click the star, the music stops. That's usually because your music file in the level is too big, especially when it switches between instrument banks. So you have to be careful of that. But in this case, we'll go and test it out in Shine Stars 3 and make sure it works properly. We'll go and close out Sex 64 if we don't need it anymore. And then we'll see the other close that out too. So I will test it out in um, Love or Love Importer if it opens. We'll test it out in Shine Stars 3 and I'll go click it. Alright, so let's see if it does the thing. So here we go. Spawned in the star. Also, it's horribly loud compared to the rest of the level, but that's volume stuff. And there you go. It plays afterwards and does not stop playing. It plays afterwards and does not stop playing. Yes, it doesn't doesn't silence the music when we click the star. It's good. Alright. I guess that concludes this tutorial of how to use Sex64. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comments and I'll try and help you. But, alright, let's see. I don't think I have another music tutorial planned. Maybe a transcribe, maybe like transcribing stuff. I don't know, I'll see. But, anyways, thanks for watching. Hope this tutorial helped you guys. See you later. Bye.